All right, take two. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Canteen Cut. My name is Scott, and today we're looking at a duplexer, and I'm working on my repair for the duplexer. Um, this is the cavity without the adjusting rod in it, and here's one with, and then these two are, they're all pretty much the same parts. And so what has happened is the rods and this is the this is the rod you saw yesterday and this is what it's attached to and this whole assembly slides into here and then the rod comes out at this end kind of like these three over here and the problem was they had cut the rods too short, so I had to put longer rods in. So this is the piece that looks like on the outside, on, on the inside. And then this is what slides. This piece goes inside here and it slides up and down. And that's what tunes the duplexer. So today's going to be a bunch of short clips that I'm going to piece together as I go through the process of trying to get this thing to do what I want to do. So hang in there, more to follow. All right, part two, I'm out here in my shop and I am cutting the threads to quarter 20. That's kind of what they look like. I'll clean them up a little bit. I'll test them in the tube. Uh, this is just a, a, a one inch die wrench with a quarter 20 die in it. This is called a die. The part that makes threads in a hole is called a tap. That's why it's called a tap and die set. But anyhow, moving along, I'm going to test those and I'll do the other ones and give you another update. Short here, um, I got done threading the rods. The die I bought was a cheap die and it was a real pain to get those threads on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back with my die grinder. I'm going to grind off that tapered part there and make it look a little better. And that's my die grinder. That goes back to my millwright days. And uh, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to cut these rods to length. And then I'm going to start putting them in. The next one. And I thought these were Loctited at this end. This is where the threads are. And so I bought a heat gun because the secret to getting rid of that uh, red grade Loctite this will apply a lot of heat and it breaks it down makes it easier but this one while being a little tight did come right off and so that's an easy one so pretty much it's take this one off put the new rod on cut the rod the length and i'm going to do this three more times and then we'll go to the next step the difference between the two rods uh, the one on the left is the rod that came out, and the one on the right is the one I'm putting in. There's about a six inch difference, and that'll give me the full range of the duplexer, which is like from 132 to 170, or 172, I think. And if I wanted to cut it to just what I needed, I probably just needed about three more inches. But anyhow, this is going to restore it back to full length. I just wanted to show that to you. Uh, also, too, uh, there's my there's my die. Uh, this is just a what they call high speed tool steel um, die. It's a really crappy die. I really had to work to get this to work. If I if I do it again, I'll buy carbide dies. I was just in a hurry, and I went to my local hardware store and that's what they had uh, i really had to struggle with it so you know while the wrench for it this is the die wrench and this this piece in here is the die the die wrench is okay and it's a cheap wrench that doesn't have to be much if you're going to buy dies make sure you buy good dies i paid about five bucks for this and probably for about four dollars more i probably could have got a carbide die which not only cuts easier and faster, but it'll last longer. Uh, other tools that I've used, this is just a, a mill file. And I use this to, um, it's a bastard cut mill file. And I use this to deburr the edges so that you don't caught, catch anything. 
this is my vice tightener <laughs> my vice is not a very good vice it's just a cheap vice and I have to sometimes crank down with this to really get it to hold well uh, of course a hacksaw with a new hacksaw blade I did have an old blade on there but I, I took it off so that's kind of what's going on um, I'll do a, I'll do a, a, another video later that talks a little bit more about this stuff but right now I'm trying to get this done so that's all I got for working now working on the last one and the last one was in there tight the first one and the last one were really tight however this time I had a I had a heat gun and this is a very good tool to keep around your shop if things are really tight and stuck a lot of times applying heat to the female part of the joint in other words the, the part on the outside you apply heat to it it expands faster than the part on the inside and it loosens up just enough for you to get it loose uh, I had bought this specifically for the purpose of changing out these tubes because the first one was so hard but the two in the middle were easy and I said oh I wasted my money but I didn't because the last one was tough and I had to apply some heat to it but anyhow for a a workshop tool for farming country you can't you can't go wrong having a heat gun and these things put out much more heat than a hair dryer so it's, it's worth the investment well here it is all back together again I did a coarse tuning on it it all appears to be uh, as it should be it looks like my my repair took place if, as you can see on the rods I now have plenty of tuning room left and uh, you know lots of people are flashlight guys so am I uh, what flashlight did I use when working on this one I used an Olight and it is the i5T EOS and I got this as a special uh, when the COVID-19 pandemic came out. They, they, it was the first time they were offering this blue striping. And it was reasonably priced. And I thought it was pretty good. It's a nice light. I like it. I use it. It's just the right brightness. So I've got to order another part. And it's a T. That kind of a tee that would like go there so I can finish tuning this thing. I had forgotten to order one. Uh, thank you, Amazon. One will probably be here Monday. So that's pretty much it. Uh, how much do I got in the fixing this? Well, if you don't count the heat gun, but I only used it once, I got about 30 bucks. And uh, if I had bought the stuff from the company that made this thing, it would have been about $680. So I am pleased. And that's all I got for this video. Everybody stay safe and stay secure.